Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to start the press conference with, uh, without Coach Bluter. She will be here soon. Uh, we will start with questions for Caitlin and Hannah. First question, please raise your hand. We're going to go here in the second row, right here. Thank you. Go ahead. J.R. Maddox, 91.7 WMCN, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for bringing all this glory to Minneapolis. It was a wonderful experience. I just want to ask both you ladies, I mean, this was a prime example of a team game. Everybody stepped up. How are you guys going to look at this game and go forward? Yeah, I think it was really gritty and resilient out of our group. I think that's the biggest thing. Obviously, our first half were just very out of sorts in all sorts of ways, whether it was on defense, whether it was offensively. Um, but we just found a way to win, and I think that just speaks to the team that we have, the maturity that we have on this group. You know, we were down se six or seven. I don't remember exactly what it was with two minutes to play, and, you know, we just never gave up. Um, and that's what I'm probably the most proud of is we found a different way to win, and um, once we got into overtime, we kind of knew you just go and take it now. So, yeah, proud of this group. Next question here in the front row right here. Caitlin, I think you actually were down eight with a little over two minutes left. You outscored them 10-2 at the end of regulation. You scored or assisted on every one of those shots. Mm -hmm. I think you had a three. Kate had a three. You had the layup, and Hannah had a layup. Can you just talk about what was going on in your mind knowing how much was at stake in that last two minutes and how you guys played those last two minutes of regulation especially? Yeah, I feel like when you get into the groove and into the game, like those, those thoughts kind of don't even cross your mind. Like you're just there. You're playing. You trust one another, and the girl helped off of Kate quite a bit, trusted her to make the shot, and she knocked it down. I think it was the first three she had made all night. Um, that kind of just fed into her, honestly, going into the, to the overtime. I think she maybe even had another two threes or maybe three threes. But, um, you know, those are the moments you live for. Uh, our fans, you know, they were incredible. They kind of willed us to this victory. They never gave up on us. And, you know, we never, never gave up on each other. Things weren't always pretty. Things weren't always great, especially in the first half. I didn't shoot the ball well, but – you know, you just got to wipe it, let it go, and come back and respond. And I thought the biggest thing was we just started running our offense in the second half. It was a lot better. It was a lot cleaner. We got good looks. We made a few more shots. Um, and you have to give credit to Nebraska. They played really well. They made some tough shots. Anything we tried, it seemed like they always found an answer for. So. Next question here in the front, and then we'll go in the back. Go Chantel ahead. Chantel Jennings, The Athletic. Caitlin, between the Big Ten titles and the regional championship, you have quite a few pieces of net. I'm just <laughs> curious what you do with them, where you keep them. Honestly, I have some in my apartment in Iowa City, and then most of it is back home with my parents, so nobody can get their hands on it. you got to keep it in a safe spot, and usually I cut a couple extra to give to, like, my dad or my brothers or my mom just to keep it around in case I lose it, too. But, yeah, it never gets old cutting any net. Um, you know, I feel like we're, we're pretty good at that now, and, you know, hopefully we get to do it a few more times here coming up in, in late March. We're going to go way in the back. Next question. A.J. Roven in the line. Caitlin, you can obviously face a Big Ten team in March Madness, but if that's not the case, what has this conference meant to you? Yeah, you never know what might happen in, in the NCAA tournament, but obviously, you know, selection committee usually keeps us pretty ap apart from each other for the most part, and um, if this is my last time playing in a Big Ten game between two Big Ten teams, then... Um, what better way to end it all? I mean, you know, you have the overtime, you have the we fight back, bad shooting, good shooting, um, defensive stops. I mean, it just really had it all on the biggest stage and um, can't be happier for our group. And, you know, this was the only way we could end it. So um, just really, really grateful. Second row, and then we'll go in the first row. Go ahead. Hi, Maya Flacky with Gopher Hole. Hannah, I saw you were very emotional at the end there. What was going through your head? Um, I think we just have worked really hard all season, and um, it's just a huge buildup, um, and I get really happy and really excited, so just... Hannah's very emotional. Yes, that I am. Surprising. I am, but it's great. It's great <laughs> being here. Question here in the front. Dargan Souther with the Des Moines Register. Caitlin, you guys really haven't had many or if any games like this where it's a struggle all the way through. You can kind of feel that March tension closing in down mm -hmm. the stretch. To get a game like this, it being right before the NCAA tournament starts, um, how beneficial, I guess, can this be, even though I'm sure in it it wasn't always the most fun? <laughs> yeah, I think in the first half it wasn't always the most fun. It was just kind of frustrating at times, and I think 
that was kind of our problem. We weren't really smiling and having fun. And then the second half, we kind of flipped what we were doing, flipped the script, and had a lot more fun. Things started going our way. We're just a lot more patient. But also, if we want to reach our goals in March, we're going to have to find ways to win that aren't always pretty. you got to be resilient. you got to be gritty. And I think this is a prime example of that. And everybody's going to give us their best shot. That's what it's been all year. I think our, our team is very, you know, prepared for that. We've been through it. We're ready for it. Um, so I'm just, I'm just proud of our group. We just weathered every storm that we had. We kept fighting and, you know, things fell our way there at the end. And like you said, it definitely felt like that March tension in the air, especially with people stepping to the free throw line late in the game. And, um, that's what makes it so fun. Right here in the third row. Caitlin, Chip Skigans with the Minneapolis Star Tribune. You're down eight there with two minutes and you hit that step back three. What does that do uh, for the mindset there on the court? Yeah, I think it it gave us some life more than anything. And Coach Bluter calls a timeout, and we all just kind of took a breath for a second. And eight points and five points seems a lot different. Um, and then I think we ended up getting another stop. And then Kate, I think, ends up making a three. And then we get another stop, and I come down and I make a layup. I don't know if it all happened in that order, but it was something similar to that. But um, I just think, like, <laughs> this team is never out of a game, no matter if it's 15 points in two minutes, whether it's five points in two minutes. We have the offensive firepower to be into any game, um, and we all believed that. We all knew that, and we never gave up, and um, that's what I'm the most proud of, honestly. Question here in the front. Uh, yeah, Caitlin, Jeff Linder, Cedar Rapids Gazette. I know in Dallas last year you were able to um, retrieve the basketball that uh, you, yeah. you threw. This one went like uh, yeah, yeah. Stands, I, didn't it? I don't know where that went this time. Yeah. Uh, you gonna get that one back too? <laughs> Probably not. Beth Getz came up to me. She's like, "You make it hard to find the basketball when you just chuck it into the stands." But no, I, I just chucked it. I hope some fan has it, and good for them. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Question uh, in the back left here. Uh, Jason Rude, KCHA. Uh, we've been talking since Sunday about the short turnaround and, and uh, you know, the, the, the short timeline. Just curious what the schedule looked like, what your nights were like last night as you were trying to recover for today. Honestly, hot tub, cold tub, uh, get back to the hotel, scout, eat, massage, and go to bed. Really quick turnaround, and obviously it was like a 6.30 wake up for us with the time change included in that. So um, not something we've ever really dealt with before, and um, that's kind of how it is. And, I mean, Nebraska probably felt it worse than us. They were playing their fourth game. We were playing our third. And um, I think everybody was definitely feeling it in the fourth and in, in an overtime too. But um, well, I'm sure we'll have a couple of days off to rest and recover. So proud of our group for just giving everything they had, especially being down a starter this whole weekend. You know, uh, Sydney Falter steps up and plays her best basketball of her career. And um, I'm really proud of her. Right here in the front. Caitlin, I know you're probably not thinking about this right now, but there's a pretty good chance winning this tournament seals a number one seed for you guys, which Iowa hasn't had in a long time, since 92. Can you talk about just what that means um, in terms of having that seed and how that maybe affects the path going forward? Yeah, like, honestly, whether they give us the one seed, they give us the two seed, I don't think it really matters a ton. You're more so just kind of concerned on the draw you get. I feel like that's almost more important, um, but... It's whatever the committee decides. You have no say in that. You get what you get, and you better be ready to come out and fight every single night. That's just what it is. And um, I think our group knows well enough that, you know, NCAA tournament is the best postseason tournament in all of sports. You're no, you don't have it for one night. Your season's over in a blink of an eye. And um, we're really only guaranteed one more game uh, as a team. So you got to come in and prepare every single day like it's your last. And uh, I know this team will do that. And, you know, we just want to keep having fun with each other and enjoying these moments and, um we know how long and how hard it is to get to the Final Four, but how much fun it is at the same time. So um, I think having that experience under our belt is, is going to certainly help us too. Follow-up question here in the front, and then we'll go to the fourth row. Go ahead. Caitlin, you've talked about turning the page after whether it's like a tough quarter or some consecutive missed shots in a row. I'm just curious if you can reflect on your time at Iowa over the past probably my worst years. half, yeah. <laughs> your words, not mine. <laughs> um, as you look back at the last four years at Iowa, how much better are you at that now than you were oh, God. just your maturity and all of that? A hundred times better. And I think Coach Bluter would probably say, like, especially this game and then the Penn State game, to be honest, I don't think we win those if you have freshman and sophomore, Caitlin. Um, I just was never able to let it go and move on to the next. And 
that was always really something I always struggled with and something I knew I had to get better at for this team to get where they wanted to be. Um, and I think that's where I grew the most last year. And then obviously going to this year, you're a senior, you've been through it, you know how it goes. There's good days, there's bad days, there's great shooting days, there's not as good. But when you're in a championship environment, you really have to let it go and move on to the next. And I think halftime, I really like reset my mind, let it go. Um, I knew some shots were going to go in. That's just how it works. Um, and I, honestly, I'm proud of myself. Like, um, uh, I've put a lot of work into being able to do that and letting things go and just relying on my teammates and not pressing as much. And um, honestly, that might be one of the things I'm most proud of over my entire career. We have time for two more questions for the student athletes. Go ahead in the fourth row. Caitlin, given the run that you guys had last year in the tournament and given that this is the last one for you, do you expect a different feeling heading into the dance this year? To be honest, not really. And somebody asked me that yesterday too. Like, to me, this isn't a farewell tour. Like, this is just Iowa basketball having fun and playing the game. Like, I don't want it to be all about me. I just want it to be us. And, um, yeah, I know in the back of my mind this could be my last game every single time I step on the court from here on out. But if I think that like that, I'm not going to play my best basketball. Like, I'm thinking we got another game after this. We got to win. We got to move on and um, just focus, you know, one day at a time. Enjoy every single second because, you know, my, my career has gone so fast and I don't want to miss any opportunities. And, uh yeah, I think just, you know, there's a lot of season left if we, if we want to reach our goals. So just enjoying that and, and believing in that. All right. Uh, thank you, Caitlin. Hannah, you can head back to the locker room. Congratulations. Congratulations.